people and over his nation that he said, oh, that I would, that, my, that I could weep day and night for the daughter of the slain of my people. And I read that the other day and uh, I thought, my, my goodness, that's, that's what's missing in our churches tonight uh, is tears, tears, tears of, of broken heartedness and burden and even tears of joy. And you know, you really, you know, if, if you go for a pretty good while and don't pray and don't cry, you're backslid. You really are. If I don't cry for a while, I start saying something's wrong with me. I get, you get hard. You get hard. I do. Y'all do. And old Jeremiah, boy, he, he was broken hearted. And Israel as a nation was backslid. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, the, the backslid nation of Israel and use that as a type of you and I. I think we can do that uh, without doing any damage to the scripture at all. Um, as like one old fellow said, he said, us Baptists don't believe in backsliding, but we sure practice it. And, and, and that's true. That's true. And backs, backsliding is not a, a term you find in the New Testament, but the, but the, 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 the thought is definitely there and simply means uh, you serve God and you serve God and you do real good for a while and then you just sort of slide back into your old ways. Like you're going up a bank and you slide back. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. You can be backslid sitting in the church every Sunday. Yes, sir. You sure can. Don't ever think, and I'm glad you're here and I'm here every time the door's open, but that don't necessarily mean you're all... In fact, most of the time, when somebody goes out and does something really crazy or wicked, and you say, my goodness, I can't believe that. They went to church every Sunday. It, it started way back there somewhere. You don't, you don't just backslide overnight. Uh, you, you get a little colder. You don't, a lot of people don't even realize it. You backslid and not even realize it. You've heard my illustration over and over and over about the ocean. If you're on the beach, oh, you swim. And when you're swimming out there, every wave moves you just a a little bit more, a little bit more. And you look up and say, where's my motel? That's way over somewhere. And you didn't even realize you moved. That's the way backsliding is. You just, it just hits you. I get in a mess like this. And, and, and uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Look at Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse number 2. He said, go, God told Jeremiah to cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus saith the Lord. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness. Israel was holiness. And he said, you really loved me. You served God. You done what was right. You done the will of God, the things of God. And then he says down there, I want you to keep your Bibles open while I'm up here tonight. It's going to be a little bit. Um, uh, he said, um, verse 5, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me and walk after vanity and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through? Hey, you know you backslid? The first thing you'll notice there, you know you're backslid, when you quit seeking God, when you quit seeking after Him, seeking after Him. Look at verse 6. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land? They quit saying, where's God? Where's God? You know, I've, I've been saved a long time, and I know I see people come in a lot of times when I preach somewhere. I've been preaching revivals since I was 19 years old. I mean, steady, not nonstop for many years. And... I've, I've seen people come in over and over and over and they'll come in with their Bible saying, preacher, I'm hungry. Preacher, I'm praying God will put it on you tonight. I need, I'm hungry. I'm seeking the Lord. I've been fighting the devil all week. Preacher, I need help. I'm hungry. You don't have to worry about somebody like that. You know you're backslid when you quit that. You know you're backslid when you think, nah, I don't really feel good. I think I'll just stay home tonight. And, and you don't read your Bible and you turn the TV on. And how you read a half a chapter in your Bible and you're ready to go to sleep. And you turn the TV on and watch it for two hours. You ever notice that? 
Uh, you quit seeking God. You quit seeking the Lord. Uh, you remember when you used to pray? Remember when you used to go to prayer meetings? Remember when you used to pray even out in public? Well, there's some of y'all, and I've done it too, still do. Uh, somebody, you meet somebody uptown, and they'll say, I want you to pray for me. You say, all right, let's bow our heads and pray right here, right now, right in front of God and everybody, right? And, and that remember when you used to be that? Remember when you used to bow your head and pray at lunch, at work? You remember at school? Some of y'all, kid, you went to school and you said, I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek God. Remember when you said, I don't care what people think about me. But you quit that. Somehow or another, you just, you're a little too mature for that. Uh-uh. You're backslid. You're backslid. You're backslid. When you really get right with God, you want to seek Him. You want to seek Him. Uh, by the way, uh, when, when you're right with the Lord, you're not ashamed of Him. When you get ashamed of the Lord, that's a good sign you're backslid right there. When you quit seeking the Lord, praying. By, we, we've been out giving out tracts before. And somebody come up and uh, say, "Hey, how y'all doing?" And and they say, "Oh, we're we're we're, we're Christians. We're Christian." And I give I've done this uh, many a time. I say, "Well, here, help us give these out." They go, "Scares them to death. Scares them to death." I think, boy, ain't you some? Sometimes people say, "That's all right. Keep it. Give it to somebody that needs it." Say, here, help us give it to somebody that needs it. They won't. They won't. Chicken backslid. Just plain backslid. Uh, uh, you remember when, when the preacher would say, we're going to fast. There's, uh, remember a long time ago when I would say, look, y'all, youth rally's coming up, let's fast. You couldn't wait to raise your hand. You're like, well, I'm going to volunteer. For I'm going to fast. Pray. Now you just sort of slump down in your seat and hoping everybody will take up all the days so you won't have to and all that. You quit seeking God. You quit seeking God. You say, Brother Danny, you ever get like that? Yes, sir, absolutely. You say, what do you do about it? I make myself seek him. I make myself go, go after him. Listen, it's a fight. Why do you think he called the soldiers? We're fighting a war. We're fighting a war with our flesh, with the world, with the devil. You don't just stay right with God. I don't know where people get this idea of the, well, I went down the altar and made it right. And that's smooth sailing here on in. No, you, you have to fight to stay right with God. It's not a fight to stay saved. It's not a fight to get saved. But it's a fight staying right. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you won't have the fight of your life, buddy. When you start trying to live for the Lord, the devil will throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. Amen. Some of you have had it done to you. I mean, he'll throw everything. And people say, well, I'm nothing. The devil ain't bothering me. It's because you and him going the same way. Uh, when he goes one way and you go the other, you're going to hit. You're going to hit. You're going you're gonna to knock, knock heads with the devil. If you're, when you quit seeking God, you are no, that's your backslid. Number two, here's another way you know you're backslid. You follow other gods. Little G, look at verse 11. Got your Bibles open still? Look at verse 11. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. He said, these people have turned from, to other gods that does profit. You know that you're backslid when you start turning to other gods. As a matter of fact, let me say it like this. You know you're backslid when anything gets your love and your affection and your adoration more what you used to give to the Lord. Let me ask you something. If a man pulled you up in the middle of the night and stuck a gun at your head and said, what's the most important thing in the world to you before you die, what would you say? I'd say the Lord and being saved right with him. And if you'd say anything else, you 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 got your priorities wrong, buddy. It, it, when that time comes, it ain't your family, it ain't your job, it ain't your car, it ain't your Lord himself. That's right. And that day will come. You might not have a gun put to your head, but the day's going to come sooner or later. Don't follow other gods. Here's the way you know you're backslid. Now, some of you are going to be a little uncomfortable here, but it's a truth, and i got to say it. It's, you know, when you really get on fire for God and you really get right with God, you give this up, you give that up, you, you get dedicated to everything, and then after a while, you find yourself going back, well, uh, in other words, you start listening to that music that you gave up one time. 
Right? You say, well, Brother Danny, don't you ever have no trouble with music? I sure do. I can go in a store and sometimes hear a song, and it, five miles down the road, it's playing in my head. I have a fight with it. And the only way I can stay right with the Lord is just absolutely not listen to none of it. I mean, none of it. You can't help but hear it. Now, what I'm getting ready to say is important. You can't help but hear it, but you can't help listening to it. If you're at work, something and they play it, and you can't help it, the Lord will help you with that. But if you deliberately put it on in your car or on your headphones or on your phone, because, well, it's not really devil worship. Well, there's more stuff that's sin than devil. There's more music than, uh, than devil worship that's wrong. And, and there are some, some and you know how I am about music. I'm very, 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 I believe music is one of the most, the biggest tricks. Of all. And I know some of y'all think I'm overboard, but I think you're underboard. And I don't think, I don't think every song has sound exactly like. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Southern gospel that I don't think honors God. There's a bluegrass that don't honor God. Let's just be honest about it. Amen. Some of that stuff, you know the Lord ain't in some of that, some of that junk. That's uh, some of the hillbilly music, but he sure ain't in rap and rock and worldly hip music. He's not. He's not. Now, I know preacher, well, uh, no, I can't, but I, I can show you in the Bible where it says you're supposed to have common sense. And I can show you in the Bible where there was some music when David played on his heart, it made evil spirits flee. And I can show you in the Bible where he played a certain, and the Spirit of God came on him. Sure can. I can show you that in the Bible. And so just be honest about it now. Be honest about it. You say, well, um, I, 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 I went and throwed all my shorty shorts away, and, but then I went and bought me some more. You know, uh, you, so be careful about saying, I, I, I give this up for the Lord, and then you figure out that it wasn't wrong. <laughs> you matured and figured out it wasn't really wrong. Amen. Now, on, on, the, right, on the right side of that, there, you, you do, I don't, I don't believe every single thing is wrong now that I did when I first started preaching. I've learned a lot, but I still believe everything the Bible says is wrong is wrong. Got that? I remember when I first got saved, we didn't know. We, we read the Bible and we, we read through there and it said uh, uh, not to make any graven image of anything. And me and these boys looked at each other and said, oh my goodness, that means pictures on the wall. They're graven images. No more pictures on the wall. And we tried to do, and I said, God, we'll throw a driver's license away. I said, hey, you're not supposed to make a picture. But, you know, the scripture, if you finish reading that scripture, it said, a uh, graven image of anything to bow down and worship them. It don't mean you can't have a picture of your kids or a picture of your dog or a picture of your house or something like that. But if you're, if you're going to worship it, it does. But there's, there's things like that you do mature on. But when something is morally wrong and is carnal and worldly, you don't mature to the place that it makes that all right. You're backslid. You're backslid. You say, Brother Danny, I remember there was a time when I wouldn't watch nothing on TV. And now I say, well, at least it's not that. And I watch them R-rated movies and I watch most of the PG movies. And I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, well, you're backslid. You heard me correctly. When you get right with the Lord, your heart is really right with the Lord. There's something inside you takes a fit when you see people cussing and taking God's name in vain and taking their clothes off. It says, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit's inside you saying, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right. But if you keep doing it, you'll drown out His voice. He has a nation changed their gods, which are no gods. Look, we want a revival. Every one of us want a revival. Every one of us ask you, you want a revival? Sure, we'll take it. Well, it, it ain't that simple. They're gotta, we got to cleanse our own lives. We got to clean up our own backyard. We got to get our own heart right, y'all. I mean, deep, deep down in our hearts. I don't want, I don't want anything other than sports, sports. Uh, uh, we're living in a generation where sports are just absolutely uh, good night. 
I mean, and, and I, I know support are okay in its place. Bodily exercise profiteth little. There's nothing wrong with, with, with playing a game. Checkers, you know, I like back. It's place. But you can, you, can, you can let anything come between you and the Lord. I, it, honestly, it bothers me at the preachers that I hear. And I listen to a lot of preaching, especially the younger ones. The older ones didn't do this much. But this younger generation of preachers, they'll get up and for three minutes talk about their, their football team and are they winning. And you notice you don't hear me doing that? I'm not up here to talk about the Carolina Tar Heels. I couldn't care less if the Tar Heels or Duke, either one, ever won another game. Couldn't care less. Do I like basketball? Yes, sir, I do. But I'm telling you, I ain't worshiping a, a heathen school like, like UNC Chapel Hill, the beer-drinking capital of North Carolina. I'm not advertising. I ain't putting it on my car. I put something that says, Jesus saves on my car. You can do what you want to. And I, ain't, I don't know if anybody's done that. But listen, brother, and I'm, not a, I'm not Abercrombie and Fitch ain't my God. Jesus Christ is my God. I want to put something on my car that says, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Hey, man, right there. I'm teaching. I'm not going to preach. Uh, you, you follow the gods. I heard preachers get up and all that talk about for five minutes is their team losing and they're, and, you know, whatever. But honest to goodness, man, let's get up and preach the Bible. Preach the Word of God. Get somebody help. If you use sports for an illustration, which I do many times, that's fine. But that's not our God. It's not our God. Dax, you know, Dax is a, he, he's the, he's the fastest kid, his age group in America. And I don't get up here and brag on him. I'll use him to use him, but I'm not going to get up here and brag on him. Our, we've won, we've won some trophies in basketball. And you've never even heard me mention it up here. You know why? Listen, people, sports ain't our God. It's not our God. There's nothing wrong with it in its place. You play football, hallelujah. You play basketball, you play soccer, tennis, whatever you want to. Good exercise, but it's not God. He said they've changed their God. And you know as well as I know, this nation's made a God out of sports and, and, and other stuff too. I don't know how I got off on all that, but uh, be very careful. Be very careful that you, when you find yourself going and digging out something that you gave up when you was really right with God. Be careful about that. Be real careful about getting under conviction. You say, well, I was just emotional when I done that, and it's really okay. Well, no, no. Are, are you right with God now, or was you right with God then? When you follow other gods. Let me show you another one. Look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. For though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, Yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord. You know, another sign of self-righteousness is, I mean, of backsliding is self-righteousness. Many, when they're backslid, instead of admitting it and saying, man, I need prayer and I need to get right, become self-righteous and sing and testify and try to impress people and everything. But it's got a weird spirit on it. Have you ever heard somebody get up and sing a song or preach a sermon, and it's just a weird, something ain't, something ain't right. I mean, yes, you have. You sure have. And, and it's just like, uh, uh, it's like they're living a backslid life, but trying to convince everybody else they're right. That ain't, that ain't your way to do. That's what they did. They said, you got soap. You tried to wash yourself with soap and everything. Your iniquity's marked. That soap ain't going to take, you got something soap won't wash off. You got something only the blood of Jesus can get rid of. And all you young people in here this evening, you better remember, you're going to answer to God for your life. You're going to answer to God for everything you do, everywhere you go, every CD you listen to, every movie you watch, you will give an account to God. You better, you better start get, taking life more serious just because you're 12 or 14 or 16 or 18 or 20 mean you say oh, I get fooled around I'm young I'll wait till I get old like them then I'll get right you better take it serious now you better take it serious now uh, the closer you get to God the more guilt you feel over sin 
and the more tender hearted you are, uh, the closer you get to God. Like when you were really, really on fire for God and you had to miss one church service. Remember, you just felt terrible. You say, oh my goodness, I just felt awful. I didn't get to go to church Sunday. Then you do it again, 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 again. First thing you know, it don't bother you. You don't even think about it. First thing you know, you don't even, you don't even have no conscience about it. You don't even have no guilt, you know, because your conscience can be seared. Your conscience can be wore down like an iron on plastic. Shh. Where it ain't got no feeling. You burn real hard sometimes. You ain't got no feeling. You're numb. That's where your conscience can get. So my conscience don't bother me. Your conscience is only a safe guide as long as it goes by the scripture. And as long as it goes by the scripture, you're all right. Uh, so self-righteousness, verse 22. And then number four, look at verse 27. He said, say unto a stock, thou art my father. And to a stone, Thou hast brought me forth, for they have turned their back unto me and not their face. Look at this. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. And then look what the Lord said to them, verse 28. But where are thy gods that thou hast made? Let them arise, if they can save you. Boy, man. They turned their back on God, like here's God right here. And I turn my back on him. I'm over here like this. And then I get myself into a mess and I say, Lord, help me. The Lord will say, uh, uh, let that pot help you. The Lord will say, let your friends save you. You left me for them. Let them save you. The Lord will say, let the, go get you a six pack of beer. See if that'll save you. He said, where have you gods that you've made? You go after these other gods, then turn around to me, want me to save you when you're in trouble? Ain't that just like us? We go out here and make other things our God, and then when something bad happens, we say, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me. Man, you know what he told them? He said, you bring other gods, go ask them to help you. Now, the Lord wasn't being mean to them. He's trying to help them see what they had done. They had turned their back on him. They had turned their back on God. And when they did, brother, uh, when they turned their back on God, they, they had, they had uh, uh, other gods, and the Lord said, well, there's your God. Ask, let him save you. Um, like, uh, it's like, I don't know how to say it. I don't know. How, I guess some of the first thing, some of the first signs of backsliding, uh, you quit reading your Bible regular, or you get way behind, you quit praying, it's easy for you to miss Wednesday night. Wednesday night's the first thing to go. And then Sunday school's the next thing to go. And then Sunday night's the next thing to go where you're only coming Sunday morning. And I've seen so many people go that pattern. I've seen people go to church for all these years, never miss a service, start missing Wednesday night. And if you have to work or you're sick, I understand that. I got it. I, but if you, deliberately, Wednesday night, then it's Sunday school. Just come in at 11. Then it's Sunday night. Just come Sunday morning. Next thing you know, they're coming one hour a week. And that ain't enough, y'all. Because it ain't going to be long. You're going to be missing that. And i tell you another way. I tell you, this, this ain't really what a, a subject tonight. You know another way you're really getting backslid? When you start holding back on that money. You remember when, when you're right with the Lord, it don't bother you one bit to give God His tithe and your offering. Don't bother me. It don't bother you a bit. I've been there. I've been there. And I've also been to times when I've got my check cashed and I take my tithe out and something and say, God, that's a lot of money. And I did it anyway. I've never not done it that I know of. I don't ever remember anything. Since I learned you're supposed to do that, I've never not done it. But there's been times when I didn't want to. And I thought, well, if I don't want to, ah, you're liable to find a way. You watch, you watch a man. Put it like this, over the plate, waist high. When God gets your heart, he's got your pocketbook. God gets your heart, he got your pocketbook. People say, well, let's give the Lord our talent. If God gets your heart, he got your talent. If God gets your heart, he'll get your time. If God got your heart, he'll get your money. And it won't bother you one bit. You'll, you'll come to church on Sunday morning and say, glory to God, you let me work all week, Lord. You let me have a payday. You put groceries on my table. You put gas in my car. I can stand up. I can walk. I'm 
thrilled to put my offering in. Uh, but if you start thinking, man, that's a lot of money. I bet everybody else ain't doing it. I bet so-and-so don't. Besides, I need it. God understands. I don't, this man at work needs a little help, and I gave him my tithes. Whoa. Whoa. You want to help the man at work? Give him your money. Don't steal God's money and give it to him. Now, you tell the church, and the church will give him money and help him if they need help. But you, you stole it from God and tried to get the glory and act like it come from you, didn't you? <laughs> Whew, it's awful for Wednesday night, ain't it? But uh, if we want a revival. We got to get our heart right. You start, you start turning your back on the Lord. Listen, when the prodigal son was down there in the, in the hog pen, you know what he done? When he's prod hog pen, he came to himself. He wasted all his money and everything. He said, oh my goodness, my, my father's got hired servants, people that work for him and live in the servants' quarters, and they got it better off than I am. I'm going back home to my father. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Um, Look at chapter 3 and verse 22. And I'm going to say a couple more things and I'm done. Look at, look at chapter 3 and verse 22. This is what we need to do. Our church, Shining Light Baptist Church. Let's do this. Chapter 3, 22. Return. So return what, preacher? The Lord. Ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. There's the answer. Run back to Jesus, buddy. Run back to the Lord. Run back to the Lord. Now, here's a picture of a backslider. A wounded conscience. Conscience. A mind sick of itself. A memory full of self-reproach. A heart pierced with the Lord's arrows of conviction. A spirit broken with the load of inward accusation. Going around feeling guilty all the time. A miserable existence indeed. A backslider is like a broken ship on rocks that can't sail. Like an a eagle with a broke wing. You ever seen them eagles? You have them over at Dollywood years ago. They, they got the broke wing and stuff, and they just have to just stand, just stand there all the time. That's all they can do. Can't fly. That's a picture of a backslider. A garden that's overgrown with weeds. You live near anybody who's let their grass grow and the garden and we just overtook their life. And don't that look awful? That's the picture of a backslider. You say, well, Brother Danny, I know I'm about half backslid, but I ain't hurting nobody but myself. Let me tell you a story and I'm through. You ever heard of Mark Twain? Mark Twain was a, a brilliant man, but he wasn't, never did get saved that we know of. He wrote those famous little stories, uh, Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer, that we all grew up on when, when in my generation and hearing those stories. And Mark Twain's wife was a Christian. And she's a good Christian. And when they first got married, they read the Bible and prayed before every meal. They prayed before every meal. And she was a witness to him. And he was a very skeptical, sort of a agnostic guy, uh, he didn't believe the Bible. He didn't believe in God. Uh, he, he had his doubts about it all. And she said, uh, as time went by, she got to talk to her sister one day, and she said she'd given up some of her beliefs and was shaken by people, places, and philosophies to which she was exposed. That means this. She is a good Christian woman, She's married to Mark Twain. He was famous. They traveled a lot. And when you travel a lot, you're exposed to philosophies, other religions, and beliefs, people, and places. And it shook her faith. And she gave up. She lost her faith. Now, you wouldn't believe the men that went to the army that did that. Listen, when them boys come back from Vietnam... Some they mean half of them was infidels because you're raised, listen to me, you're raised in church, you're taught the Bible all your life, you, you know the Lord, you're saying, and here they, and, and, but they always thought mama's saved, mama's God's right, and I believe it, but they never did get their feet on the ground strong. 
And they went to Vietnam and they saw all them other, worshiping other gods and people blowing each other's brains out and hearing the other from all over the world. And you're exposing those people say, well, you mean to tell me their religion's wrong? And you mean to tell me their religion's wrong? You mean to tell me they're all going to hell? What makes you think you're alive? And philosophy and philosophy and philosophy. And the Bible said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's in the Bible, Philippians. Beware lest any man spoil you. It'll ruin you. Philosophy will ruin you. One of the worst things about college is philosophy, brother, and philosophy and the atmosphere and all the kids from all over the United States and the and the pressure that a young Christian. That's why I tell you, you better you better know what you believe and you better know why you believe it. You better not just try to float in on mom and daddy's religion and coattail. You better have some God in you that's yours and between you and the Lord. Make your faith real between you and the Lord. The average young person in average youth groups, you know what you believe? Yeah, I believe Jesus is on the way to heaven. Oh, show me that in the Bible. I don't, know, I don't know. That's what Brother Danny said. See, you got to have more than that. You got to have more than what Brother Danny said. Get it for yourself. Find out yourself. Get on your knees. Get your Bible and find out for yourself, buddy. There's a whole world out there that will devour you. Make you a drug addict and a prostitute and, a, and dead and in a rehab and everything else. You think I'm kidding? That, that world out there ain't y'all's friend, y'all. It ain't. I'm talking about a furniture factory. I'm talking about anywhere out there in the world. The, the devil's out there waiting on you. And Mark Twain's wife lost her faith. Listen. And when she died, he, they said he always felt responsible for that and it haunted him. So that means deep, deep down inside, he thought, you know, it, it might have been true and it's my fault she got messed up like that. And Mark Twain probably died and went to hell. I don't know that. But if he did, it could have been because his wife didn't stay strong in her faith. I'd like to challenge every one of you. You get on your knees Everything we preach up here, me or any other preacher, you check it out in the Bible and get it and get it for yourself. Get it for yourself. Get your own convictions. Get your own. Make get your feet on the rock yourself. You say, well, brother Danny, I'm too young. I can't understand the Bible. I was 18 and I got it. I was 19. And I got it. You have to want it. You have to be hungry for it. Spend some time in it. Get listen to preaching. Listen to all the preaching you can get. That's real Bible preaching and. Form, get, get your doctrine straight in your head and, and your, your feet firm on the ground. Listen, if he had married some Christian girls I know, buddy old Twain would have had a fit and he'd have probably got to say because they stick to what they believe. Thank God there's some young people that'll stick to what they believe. Like that girl stuck that knife on that, that track on that motorcycle guy's knife that I was telling you about the other night. She stood up for what she believed. That girl had her feet on the ground. I challenge you to do that. Let's don't be backslid. Here, we got a chance to have a revival, y'all. Uh, let's, let's have a revival. Come on, Miss Desi, let's stand. Let's all stand and have a word of prayer. She's going to play softly tonight. Maybe you want to come and pray this evening. Maybe you want to just pray there at your seat. Let's say, God, God, send us a revival. God, send me a revival. God, send my family a revival. God, send my home. Our, our loved ones need it. Our kids need it. Our grandkids need it. Our brothers and sisters need it. All y'all kids, you go to school with kids that need it. Let's pray for revival. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to return to you with all of our hearts tonight. Forgive us for everything that we've done, said, wrong. Forgive us for everything we hadn't done, we should have done, that's been wrong or wicked. We ask forgiveness of everything we've done, out of the will of God. Lord, help us to rededicate our life to you, to make a covenant with our eyes, with our heart, with our mind, and serve you with all of our hearts. Bless our revival coming up next week, Lord. May the Holy Ghost come, do a great, mighty, powerful work. Have you in our hearts this evening. Bless everybody as we go our separate ways and do a great work here tonight. We'll thank you for what you do. Lord, help us to live for you every day. Help us to be soul winners. Help us to bear fruit like I was talking about Sunday night. And whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. Hallelujah. Some praying tonight. We'll take we'll wait just a minute while others are praying. You ask the Lord to help you. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Ask the Lord to help you. Amen. 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 So, Lord, I want to know what I believe and why I believe it. Lord, I want to get my feet on the ground. So when you get out there in the world, it won't shake you. It won't shake you. You won't be spoiled through philosophy, through evolution, through Eastern religions, through uh, positive thinking, through humanism, uh, all of the, the doctrines of the devil that's out there to try to destroy your faith. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Now, uh, I'll say again, don't forget Saturday night. I know we have a, a several, a lot of adults are going with us. You are more than welcome to go. We'll come back and have some good food at six o'clock. We'll meet. We're going to go sing and preach over at Pinky and Doris's, just right up here, up the road up here, 96. And uh, we're going to uh, 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 try to go see uh, Brother Ed and uh, maybe Roger and Lynn, uh, Miss Rhonda that lives right over yonder on the other side of there. We got bunches of them close that we can go sing and have a little church service in their yard. We'll take the guitar, and just go have a good time. Lord, so uh, go with us. You're welcome to take the car and follow the bus, and uh, we'll have a great time. Okay, Amen. Okay, so let's let's pray about that, and then everybody prep yourself now. Get yourself ready for revival. Our kids started school today, and I know they're going to be ready to go to bed when they get home tonight. They got up early this morning, and uh, they're in there full time now. So uh, uh, I pray for Kelly. She couldn't hold her eyes open. She got to she's asleep. Uh, but anyway, uh, back back in the old grind, amen. All right, let's right, we'll be dismissing prayer. After this, fellowship with each other and be friendly in the Lord. And... Uh, some of you guys, I need a little help here. Oh, by the way, I want to say thank you, men, for coming and working Monday. Man, this play, it looks brand new around here, especially that man right over yonder, Jason. He came back, came back and worked all day yesterday. Uh, but uh, uh, I appreciate you guys helping Monday. We made it look way better. I hate weeds. Uh, so uh, thank you all for doing that. Okay. Remember Brother Steve, He, uh, he he's had a little, tit, little touch in his back again. I'll pray for him. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Amen. Everybody, let's pray. All right. Uh, Brian, how about you dismiss us? Go ahead.